Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the midweek Serie A action. I decided to do a Serie A video as well because uh, quite some happenings, although you saw it in the title, I'm very worried for Milan. I, I'm really worried that Milan will hang on to this Champions League spot. And yeah, Milan is probably one of those teams that would have needed the Super League uh, most and probably went only along because they didn't want to miss out. And from what you hear, Paolo Maldini, the sporting director, didn't even know about it. He heard about it on Sunday. Uh, and that's in one way staggering already. But then what I really li like is that Gassidis, who wanted to explain it to uh, the team and uh, Maldini barred him from uh, talking to, to the players more or less saying, uh, you know, keep business business, sport is sport and uh, stay out of here. Yeah, um, I made enough videos about the Super League and so on, so we don't need. But I am worried about Wild Milan because uh, as well as last weekend went, this midweek did definitely not and it was uh, all down to their performance against Sassu uh, Sassuolo. Yeah, Sassuolo. Um, where again finishing is missing and so um, it was with a little bit of luck that they still remain in second but as you can see Milan is not down here that's the number four spot on my wall yep Napoli however brilliant game brilliant game uh, that game yesterday um, maybe the scoreline was a little bit too high in favor of Napoli because uh, Lazio was actually well in that game as well. It was a rough game, but the goals in there, man, there were great goals in there. Absolutely stunners. This was just for that. And yeah, um, Roma clawing themselves against At Atalanta, so also a little bit lucky for Milan that Atalanta is not going already in second spot, although they're very much on, on the way to do so, and Juventus uh, winning against Parma on the, on the bottom. Cagliari making a huge comeback suddenly and unfortunately I don't have the Cagliari jerseys in the wash so I couldn't hang it there uh, but Cagliari trying to make an escape and Torino also looking kind of safe-ish at the moment so let's jump into the games that we had I mean I saw a little bit of everything I think I saw three and a half life so and and and, and then a couple of highlights um, so at the half was the Verona Fiorentina, where Vlahovic uh, penalty just before the half uh, gives you a Fiorentina lead and Casares double doubles it and uh, Saicedo can only pull one back, but big win for Fior Fiorentina uh, also. Fiorentina, I wouldn't have this, this, this thought that they're in big relegation trouble, but they're always hovering below and they should actually be up there. And I have to say Verona is starting to be a team where... Um, I think there's potential sometimes for more. They can be really nasty to play against, but at the moment they're also trending a little bit downward. Trending downward. I think Milan is trending downward. And this is what, what has me worried. I think the game itself uh, was not all that bad. Uh, especially in the second half, where I think they need to close out, out the game. But you cannot lose to Sassuolo. You cannot lose to Sassuolo when it's such a fight. Sassuolo is a good team, don't get me wrong. Uh, but they are also, um, yeah, they got this v uh, the win of Fiorentina over, over, over the weekend, but overall they're not a super strong side. Um, the game started a little bit tentative. I I actually think at the very, very beginning, Sassuolo uh, gave Milan trouble, but Milan uh, could make the game level. And then with one really nice um, shot by Cialanoglu, from from box. This was a really well taken shot. It's one nil Milan, and maybe a draw would have been better at, at the half. But in the second half, Milan really did everything to deserve that lead, uh, and they had numerous chances to score. But again, a little bit either the precision is missing, of course, Latton it was miss, miss, missing as a focal point up 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 top. But it just didn't look all that right. Slatan by, by the way, renewing his contract for another year, which I'm not too unhappy. But I think they need to find another a replacement striker. And then Sassolo was a non not happening at that point. And then they get once uh, in front of goal and Raspadori puts it in. And then they do it a second time. And again, Raspadori, uh, who I hear now is already a Milanist trying to get him. To be honest, this was heartbreaking. Um, it was a little bit what I expected because I expected Sassuolo Sa will, will give, give them a game. And I knew getting a win here and you're probably cruising because of all the um, games that were happening on Thursday. 
You can, but now, ooh, 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 we, uh, tough schedule. I mean, you have to still play Lazio, you still have to play Juve, and you still have to play Atalanta, and all of these away from home. The only cool, cool thing is Milan is actually much, much better away from home, which doesn't make any sense at this very, very, very moment. But I am seriously worried about Milan. Uh, Bologna Torino is not much to talk about because it was a, a boring game in mo mo most of the time. However, the two goals, Musa Berro from far out was, was very nice, but the one by Mandragora, wow, and the two equalized, pretty, pretty special. That was another special goal. There were many good goals scored this week, we, we can say how they are. And another important point for Torino, who look less and less likely to getting relegated, which honestly I am quite happy about. Uh, Juventus. Find themselves down to a Brugman free kick. And yeah, why did the ball go in? Because the one player in the world that is not jumping is your superstar. Two things that Ronaldo should not do. Take free kicks and defend free kicks in the wall. You're just way too afraid that you get hit. And you're... Uh, <sighs> I heard that pretty boys shouldn't be, be in the wall, but I don't think he's that much of a pretty boy either. Uh, just take it. After that, a Porto disaster, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, and I, and I actually wanted Juve, because of Milan, I wanted Juve to lose in that one. So, uh, but I'm getting just upset if you're just so asinine and not committed in many ways. That just, just, just about the language is completely wrong. Uh, however, Juve get back on track just before they have and just after they have Alexandro. Uh, puts Juve in, in, in the lead and then the Licht with his first goal of, of the season gives Juve over, overall and deserved win and one that more or less sends Parma down. I still have them here. Fortunately, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we will not have Parma. We will most likely not have Parma in Serie A next season. I hope they will make a quick comeback. Spezia Inter. Spezia took the lead through Farias, but then uh, Inter was pressing, Perisic getting the e equal in the second half. It was comically how many chances they actually had. Uh, and even scored two goals, but both were, give, uh, were no, no, not given a fractional offside. Um, yeah, a little bit enjoyable, but you know, now Inter again moving way ahead of Milan. If Milan would have won, we probably could slightly reopen the box for... Um, uh, title challenge? No, absolutely not. Have no, not happening. Inter will win this Scudetto. Um, Roma Atalanta. Yeah, I, I, I was doing some programming here. Yes, you can even head 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 on. From what what I could get, Atalanta so much dominated the first hour, if not more, of that game. They were firmly in, in, in control and that they only got a goal through Malinowski is the only thing that you can fault them for. Roma was hanging on by a threat. The goal by, 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 by Malinowski was also expertly played, so uh, really not much happening there. However, the game turns on two yellow cards that Gosens uh, gets in the 52nd and then the sent off in the 69th. And that changed the dynamic of the game where suddenly Atalanta was hanging back and it was Roma who had had, had a chance and it's Cristante from far out getting the equalizer. Jacob then even had um, a pretty good chance of uh, scoring a winner as, as well, which honestly at this point I, re I think Roma is not dangerous for the top four again, so I can fully go Roma, you again my second favorite team in Italy, which they are, uh, but you know. Yeah, that win would have been really, 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 really nice for Roma. Albeit it was not man, man had been late. Late on, Ibanez gets sent off. Uh, also, also, also with yellow red, and I uh, had it, and there was a free kick then at the extra box. Fortunately, did not not go in. So Roma gives us a, gives a draw, gets a draw. A little bit lucky, but at least they get the draw. And Atalanta is not ahead of Milan yet. And then Napoli Lazio, I honestly was hoping that this will end in a draw. I, 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 I was looking at the situation because Lazio has this game against Torino in hand. So if they win that, they're right in the thick of it. Uh, Napoli also right in the thick of it. And then I was, yeah, maybe a draw is better. But uh, the win for Napoli at least knocked Lazio somewhat Somewhat, it's not talk about it, but knock them, you know, it's a little knock to their hopes. And maybe Milan will deliver on the weekend the blow. Um, so yeah, it's one less to worry, uh, to worry about, but it's still not, not but it looks so strong. Lazio play also looks strong. I, I, I think the game was 
a lot more even than the scoreline suggests. Um, it was a back and forth where both teams really going going forward, really uh, playing nice. And it was a a, a very weird situation where a high uh, uh, foot by Milinkovic Savic um, was not called immediately. And then uh, Lazio launches quick countering, and then they want to have and they themselves want to have, have a penalty. But it goes to VAR and the penalty is given to Napoli playing in these wonderful jer jerseys, finally. I mean, they did the wrong thing against Inter. And Insigne converts the pen penalty. However, Lazio wants to go further and is count on a, uh, uh, caught on a counter-attack. Um, uh, Mertens to Paul Politano, who puts it on the right foot, slams it in 12 minutes. It's 2-0 it's for Na Na Napoli. A few minutes later, Milinkovic Savic just hits the post. That, should have to, that egg actually should have gone in. And the game then a little bit petered out to towards the end. Uh, Lazio came out storming, however, a wonderful Insigne goal. Uh, makes it 3-0 uh, and then the one by Mertens and Zielinski even better. I mean, how beautifully was that that played, how Zielinski puts the ball to Mertens, who more or less one times is right up in the corner. I mean, the, those two goals were already great. Um, but also the Immobile goal was not too, too, too bad. And then uh, four minutes later, a free kick from Milinkovic Savic makes it 4-2. Game on, uh, Oz, Ozyman, also a nice attacking move. Ozyman and Lozano combining, giving Napoli a 5-2 win. I think 3-2 to win Napoli. Na Napoli was the bad, a better team, but, but I think 5-2 was uh, way, way too high. And it was 4-0 in the 65th. Uh, felt not quite right to me. But what a game, uh, absolutely, to finish, finish this. And Napoli looking really, really, really strong, and this is what war, this is what worries me because now Napoli look, looking strong. You were not convincing, but Milan has the head to head in Turin where they never get any, anything, and Atalanta, yeah, uh, away to Atalanta now. Here's the table: Milan hanging on by a thread. I mean, three ahead of Napoli. Uh, it's not a cushion that I'm comfortable with, and you see it. 63% uh, chances. This is the lowest in a long time that they make it to the Champions League. Just ahead of now, Napoli and Lazio hovering in there. You know, win the game in hand, 61. Win the game against Milan, you might have a chance, but it might not work out. Roma, I think, is out of, out of, out of it. But it's a really, really, really tight race for this top four spot. On the bottom, it is not inconceivable at the moment that Cagliari will catch Benevento. Has to, has, has to be said, Benevento is definitely trend, training down, although they're a fun team to watch, but um, definitely trend, training the wrong direction. As I said, Fiorentina moving up. Um, Torino having a game, game in hand against Lazio. Maybe that is a little bit of sa uh, saving grace there, but you know, if you stay 3rd third, third it's also not a given yet, but I think Torino looks look safe. I think it's more Benevento and Spezia that might uh, fall down and could be caught by Calcari. So that's that's exciting. Parma and Crotone, unfortunately, I think are down. Um, adjusting the table doesn't make much difference. So let's go straight to the expected uh, standings. We actually see that Torino is at the moment 13th. On top, Juve goes ahead of Milan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know this is not ending well. And Napoli just leveled there. I mean, it is a hair that Milan is ahead of Na of Napoli. Uh, you can already see the Lazio, Roma, uh, all of it, and Sassuolo is settling in a nice uh, eighth spot. And on the bottom, Benevento and Cagliari, but it's only a point expected. So there's a big swing potentially in there. As I said, on the weekend, Lazio Milan is the standard tie. Torino Napoli. I have some slight hope because Torino has been playing well as, as, as of late, but I think that Napoli is the better team. I also have the faintest of hopes on Fiorentina Juve because that's uh, one of those hate games, but uh, that Fiorentina ne never wins, to be honest. And that uh, Atalanta will have some fun with Bologna, I think. So, yeah. Not very positive, I'm sorry, but I, despite all the Super League, I would still support Milan and um, yeah, it is the way it is. I'm a fan and I came to the conclusion uh, that I'm hanging with them. So yeah, <sighs> not look, looking good, good, good for, for my team, but it's at least Serie A is very much exciting and, and I want to finish with that one. Why is the area exciting? We have the top spot is settled, but we have the other ones. In a Super League, that race, maybe.
a lot of the troubles with relegation and all these Euro European sports, there's still excitement in the league there. And that's important. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the Serie A action this uh, midweek. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.